Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? This is Mia Hall, founder of Brown Girls Glow and the host of Brown Girls Glow Live. Today, I am so excited to be doing the content commandments. Yes, and I am going to be doing it with my good friend, Dawn Nell, AKA China. So I cannot wait for you all to join us and to tune in, all right? So first, I am going to share just our flyer while we let you all come in. This is what we're going to talk about. Um, as you can see, this is where you can follow Dawn Nell. And this is where you can follow me at Mia Hall TV. A new name, new game. What's up, everybody? Got my friends here. Thank you all for joining. We are talking about the content commandments today. All right, so Brown Girls Glow Live, as some of you may, have, may know or may not know, is a series that I created in order to teach young women and expose them to careers in Hollywood and beyond. So that's just to really let young brown girls know that they can do anything that they put their mind to. I have plenty of friends that are achieving their dreams, accomplishing their goals. And I want young brown girls to know that they can do the same because that's what I needed. That's what I wanted when I was younger. I wish that I saw examples of what I can be when I was you know, grown up or just what I can do, how I can live a full and fun life. So it's not necessarily what we're gonna do, but it's just who we're going to be. And so I wanted to expose young brown women to just beautiful brown women that are out there doing their thing, living their dreams and taking care of themselves, you know? Um, so that's what I'm doing, continuing to do tonight. All right, so I also have a, a little video because China posted a video yesterday about, not yesterday, but a video not too long ago about imposter syndrome. And it was triggering because, you know, I was like, wow, you know, like she feels sometimes like she doesn't want to post, but I was like, but she feels so great. And, you know, all of her stuff looks cool. She has so many thousands of subscribers on YouTube. I was like, it doesn't seem like it's a problem for her, but it's even a problem for us. So let me just show this uh, quick video clip. Hello, here we have a person super talented that never puts their content out. Smile, please. Testimony. bring China in, bring China in. So yes, um, as some of you may know, yes, <laughs> yes, as some of you may know, I am a producer. Um, I do consider myself a content creator. I don't, I have about almost 400 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, China has 4.5 thousand subscribers on YouTube. Now that is nothing to sneeze at because I know as a person that's had the page for, I could have had my page for like maybe seven years, you know, and still it's hard to, to get those um, subscribers. So, you know, especially in this day and age when you have access to so many people, right? But, you know, um, she is able to, she has a lock journey, she has beautiful hair. So I'm not going to keep you all waiting any longer. Without further ado, to help me to talk about the content commandments, and we came up with 10 for y'all. I want to invite China in the room, so I'm just going to invite her. Yes, I can't wait till y'all hear our story because it's a fun one too. What's up, Sharon? What's up, Kalia? Hey, Hi, China is here. Yeah. What's going on? How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. good. Excited to have you? you on. Excited to have you. I'm excited. Yes, thank I'm you for agreeing to, to come here. through. <laughs> <laughs> hot shoes it's so funny so yes i see we got i saw your mom in here what's up miss dawn 
yes, yes, yes. And what's up to all of my yes, other people? So, so China, you know, before we before we get into the commandments, you know what I mean? Can you just um introduce yourself? You know, let people know um who you are and you know what you do as a content creator and beyond. <laughs> Okay, so hi everyone, happy Tuesday. My name is Donnell and I am a business professional for the first half of the day from nine to five, but from five and beyond, I am a content creator and I create content for YouTube as well as Instagram and a little bit of TikTok. That's new for me, <laughs> but most of my content is revolving around my hair journey, my life journey. Um, my lifestyle, you'll see a lot of content with me and my son, who's five years old, who has a big personality. And you'll also see some of my food and recipes because I try to follow like a gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free way of eating. So yeah. I yes, I love it too, guys. man. Oh, man. So if I can tell y'all, that's <laughs> she's, she's telling y'all a little bit, a little taste, but uh, really, me and Donnell's relationship goes back way, way back. I feel like, you know, I, I don't mind. You know what? We're, we're debunking and we are, you know, uh, killing imposter syndrome. So I would say it goes back to the 80s. I can, I can proudly say I'm an 80s baby. And I actually met China. It had to be in 89, right? Because we had to be like five. Yeah. So in 89, so yeah. I met China in kindergarten. <laughs> it might have even been pre-K, because weren't we in pre-K before? It could have been. I just don't remember. Right, don't remember right. Maybe your mom knows. Thing. Like she can, she can tell us, were we been. four or were yeah, we five? Because yeah, you know in 224, I feel like we have two right. pictures in 224 together. So, um, so yeah, so I, th I yeah. feel like it might have even been 88, which is wild, but you know what's going on she said yes <laughs> yep pre-k and kindergarten yeah so 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 we met in pre-k um but <laughs> so funny enough um you know we 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 lived in the same neighborhood until china i think you moved away first no oh i was going no. I moved away in second grade you right moved away yeah, I didn't first, move away yeah. grade. yes 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 okay yeah. so i moved away but then, and then I came back in third grade, but then I don't, when did you move out of Pink Houses? In fifth grade. In fifth grade, in the middle. Yeah, oh, in like know. January I or something I like that, that. Because I moved in the middle of fifth grade too, which is so funny. Yeah, but we never really? like, crossed paths again. <laughs> Wait, but did you still go to 220? Look, we're, we're catching up. <laughs> What's up, Jay Swift? What's going on, girl? But, um, but yeah, so wait. Oh, wait, did you go to 224? I did, and then up until the middle of fifth grade, and then I went to PS81, right. so I moved across right, town. Right, to wow, okay, okay, that's so okay. funny because, okay, so I came back to Pink Houses, but, you know, I I w went to 273 when I came back from, um, yeah, from whatever, third grade, and I guess first and second grade too, but, you know, but that's how we, like, lost touch. And so in high school, yeah. but, you know, funny enough, so so she moved to Best, when I moved to Best, I, I moved to Queens. I come back from Queens in the ninth grade, not until the, no, no, 10th grade. I come back from Queens in the 10th grade, you know, and there's our high school friend, yes. <laughs> Charlotte. But I come, yeah. I come back to high school in the tenth grade, and so I'm in a class, and we're you know in the track classes. So we done had class first day of school, I think. So we had multiple classes together, yeah. and at the end of the day, I knew I knew that Donnell looked familiar, but I didn't think that you know. I just thought I think everybody looks familiar, so you know I think I know everybody. So you know I was just like, yeah. <laughs> but you do, you know. So I was just like, you know, oh, you know, whatever. Um, and, um, and then at the end of class, China comes up to me like, did you go to 224? I'm <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, and I was like, like, you gotta yes. be kidding me. Like, for real. Because yeah. all day I kept hearing them, you know, when they would go, go down the roster and I was like, I know her. I was telling the, the rest of our friends, like, I know her. They were like, no, you don't know her. I was like, no, I do. Like, I don't forget a first and last name like that. And I've been looking oh, for this wow. friend since, what, 
kindergarten after kindergarten because I would always ask my mom where's my friend Mia and she was like I don't know and I was like and I would go to the park looking for you like I hope I see her today and then yeah one, time, time, we one, did one see re-encounter other. when we were like real little still though yeah but exactly uh, too little to think uh -huh, like hey right. what's your phone number <laughs> you yeah, know like, yeah like, look I'm like, I'm gonna ask her, but all day. Took, you see, it took me like all day. To get the it was, it was, yeah. Look at Charlotte, this genteel class. Yeah. <laughs> English, yeah. English class, yeah. We definitely have a genteel term grade, so that's wow, yeah. that's wow. And another fun fact me and Darnell are uh, Charlotte's daughters, godparents, godmommies. So, you know, we share that. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so we reconnected in high school, you know, by chance, but really by divine order. We don't believe nothing is really chance, but you know, right. and just have been able to stay in touch ever since. But we definitely have I definitely believe I have two pictures or they're somewhere in the world, two class pictures where we sit yeah. like right next to each other too. <laughs> like 'cause we were we were friends. We were like yeah. actually little friends. <laughs> <laughs> we were friends. <laughs> So yeah, so now we have pictures in high school graduating <laughs> together too, you know. And that was so fun. I'm glad that that we at least got that chance to experience high school. Together. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, high school yeah, could yeah. be a beast <laughs> within itself. So it's nice to see that familiar face. Like, oh, a person that I know right, that right, I trust. Right. Y'all made oh. high school so fun for me. Like. That was like, you know, just an uh, amazing experience. You know, it has ups and downs. I have broke my leg like as soon as I got to high school, but yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. We had some good times. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> In the classes uh, that we had, it was just yeah, it was all it was day last long, day. and we still got our work done. Thank God. Like yeah. some people did, but you know, exactly. we got our work done. So. <laughs> oh yes. man. We did, and we even built a virtual company. We put together, remember, like a whole staff for a that whole virtual, virtual company, company for the so next year. Look at that, and we done experienced nine eleven. <laughs> right, really, yeah, we, we really can just can. go on and on. Right, we really can before <laughs> we even go into like content <laughs> stuff, but. Okay, so all right, so this is this is for the girls. This is for you know speaking. You know we're speaking to high school girls. I, I do love you know uh, talking to high school girls. Brown girls glow, thirteen to nineteen. You know that's really our audience. So you know, um, thank you, thank you. How how was you know how do you feel like your high school experience right um, affected who you are today? And like you know you you said you create content now, and you know you're a mom, and you know what I'm saying you have a partner, and you know you you got your own home, and you know you got a lot of things. So. How does your high school experience, yeah. you know, um, um, affect affect your affect where you are today? And thank you, Nikki. <laughs> hmm. I would say, really, like just off the top of my head, I feel like my high school experience kind of trained me to handle multiple mm. things at the same time. Because mm. in high school, I worked pretty much throughout high school. I think maybe I started working mm -hmm. in the 10th grade, but it's like I always had a job while I was in school, which was bugged out to me. I'm like, how? Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I had that. We, I tried to join like the cheerleading team. I was, we were doing the <laughs> fashion <laughs> slash um, Yes, y'all, you know? yes, y'all. <laughs> you know, dancing and stuff like, so, and then, with mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. staying on the honor roll, and then still nurturing my relationships with our within our yeah, friendship, yeah, the group. what five, six <laughs> of us, so we, the group, <laughs> and so yeah, it was just, and then you know maybe having like a boyfriend at the time, so it was just like always a lot of moving parts, and there's still a lot of moving parts today. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I feel like yeah, I forgot that you were working yeah. while we were in high school. So where were you working? Girl, so first I worked at okay, a I store. Like that I store. And then, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's twenty one. <laughs> okay, okay, wow. Yeah, and I was working in a shoe department. I don't know what it wait, is. Wait, wait, did we go up and apply for that together? I feel like Charlotte. I think was we with did. Us I think and Sammy too. <laughs> I think I think I do remember that because they told us to fill out a check. Not 
that I didn't know how to file a check, but I do remember them saying, like, you know, fill out a check, yeah. like, you know, how would you probably? Yeah. Well, I do remember that. That is so funny, but I forgot. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yep. And then after that, um, I feel like there was another job. <laughs> the good old days. Yeah. I don't remember. Maybe there wasn't. Oh, I, ba I babysat at one point. Okay. Shoot, that's a job. And you were on the tennis team, too. Oh, yeah. You cheer me. You was on the tennis team. And you was a really good. I remember, like, your last year. Yeah. Was that senior year, too? Like, you, Mr. Um, Migli. What was his name, Mr. Migliaccio? I know. We we definitely are talking about the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I can't remember if that was. I think that was 11th grade for some reason. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because I remember we was on it one year. And then, and then I was like, you got real good. And I was like, hey, try this. Come yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, it was fun too like that that being on the tennis team did a lot for me more than I thought it did at that time because I don't know if you remember I, I was going through stomach issues a lot of stomach yeah. issues uh, yeah. always, always hurting I was always taking like Tums and Rolaids and stuff like mm. that and the only time that it didn't hurt was when I was playing tennis or dancing mm. so wow maybe, okay maybe it, you know, it was just taking my mind off of it, but it definitely helped me to get through, for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. Woo! Man, <laughs> man, man. Okay, good. Okay, so high school. Okay, so everybody, you know, um, that is, you know, if you're in high school and you have a lot of things that you're managing, know that this is just the beginning. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, in life, you will have to manage that. So you learn how to manage it in high school and, you know, do well with mm -hmm. it. You know, it's going to prepare you for life. So keep going. Yeah. Woo. Okay. All right. And then, okay. So let's talk about your journey kind of to, to content creation. Um, when did you first, you know, when did you even first start like your YouTube page and wanting to share about, you know what I mean? Like your lifestyle. I think, I think my, my very first YouTube video was like 10 years ago, which sounds crazy. It sounds really crazy, but I just thought like, you know, well, I do my hair. I was always doing my hair. You know this. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? Why not just record it and put it up there? Because usually in real life, people would see me and go, oh my gosh, you look so nice. I'm like, I did it myself. And they're like, what? Yeah, no, you used to be doing all the <laughs> styles. Like, I was doing the most when it came to my hair. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that was my very first video. I believe it was 10 years ago. Okay. Wow. And yeah, I didn't really have a, a plan. It was just like, I'm going to do this, record it, and share it. And I didn't stay consistent with it. I felt like, oh, I guess I could say imposter syndrome kicked in from then. Mm, the okay. Because it was like, like, I would see other people's videos, and I was like, wow, their setup is nice. Look at their background. They have good lighting, <laughs> you know, like all of these things, and I didn't have that. Yeah. Or at least yeah. I thought I didn't have it. Mm, okay. I didn't, okay. you know, I didn't really look at other areas within where I was living to say, oh, you know what? I think I can use this little corner right here because it gets natural light. Yeah. But I wasn't thinking of any, any of that, so... I definitely let my insecurity set in from seeing how perfect everyone else's content looked. Mm -hmm. That kind of just deterred me. And then when I didn't really see the likes or the views coming in, I was like, oh, maybe this sucks. Uh, <laughs> right, know? right, right. Yep, yep, yep. That could get in. So, yep. oh, man. Okay, okay. All right, so that's when you first did it. So 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if you are let's say you know late 30s now 10 years ago you were in your late 20s were you even living you weren't even living in florida no. right well, i was living in new york in the bronx i had already <laughs> moved from brooklyn to the right bronx. right and yeah um yeah that's where i was right right Right, right. Wow. Were you work now? Okay, now, now let's talk a little bit about your career journey because you used to. Well, you went to school at Lehman, right? Yes. And, and in the you Bronx. used to dance. <laughs> yes. In the Bronx, right, right, right. True, true, true. Oh, is that kind of what inspired you to kind of move to the Bronx? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> everything that you're doing. Right. Is Even though it would have been so much more helpful if I had lived in the Bronx while I was working, while I was going to Lehman, <laughs> it would have made my my life so much easier. Uh -huh. Instead, I had like an hour and a half commute on the train 
just one way. So just to get there, it was an hour and a half and an hour and a half to get back. Mm. Um, and then once I graduated, I was just continuing. Again, I was always working. <laughs> so I was even working throughout my whole college career. And then I continued with that last job for like a year. And then I was like, okay, I'm old enough to get my own place. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and rent prices at that time were too high for what I was making for me to live alone and to stay in Brooklyn. So that's what got me to say, okay, I think I got to take my, my talents uptown. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take my talents uptown. And you kind of knew the new uptown a little bit because you went to school up there at least, you know. Exactly. And then you were dancing up there. So how long did you dance? And like from when to, you know, from <laughs> when to when were you like dancing? Okay, so I didn't start dancing at Lehman until my third year. And it's like, it's weird. It was almost like I, I needed some other like-minded people to kind of like catch up to me, meaning like they were freshmen. Mm. And they were interested in what I was interested in, which was dance. Okay. So that's how we kind of connected. And I was just like, man, where were you guys? <laughs> it's like, <"Where laughs> right, you <laughs> uh, yeah. right. So I danced um, from the third year of college I believe as well as senior year. And then I even went back mm. and put on two more shows when I was a, just an alumni. But me, along with some other people, we went back and put on shows. And there was so much fun uh -huh. and so filling. And, you know, sometimes I, I feel some kind of way because I feel like <laughs> Lehman kind of gypped me mm. in a way because. I could not decide on a major. I went two straight years, no major, no major declared. And I was just taking all these different classes, trying to figure things out. Yeah. And I was like, okay, nothing is popping over here for me. I, I don't I don't really like any of this, but I like dance. Uh -huh. And they were like, yeah, well, we didn't have enough students to sign up to keep that program open. So we don't have that anymore. And I was just like, but it's a performing arts school. Like, right, right. Why didn't you have, yeah. Dance. Yeah, so that's how I ended up getting into business administration as a major. And then literally in senior year, they announced, hey, guys, dance is coming back. And hey. I, was like, I, I contributed. Uh. <laughs> I put on the shows that made people interested wow. to sign up. And I, yeah, so, yeah. I guess well, things just went the way they were supposed to, <laughs> but sometimes I think about it and I feel some kind of. Uh, but but that's your legacy. What's up, Pedro? Speaking of dance, <laughs> we got a <laughs> former former head of dance for Park Place Center. What? You know, <laughs> just joined the yeah yeah. So, but that's your legacy. You helped to re restart the dance program at Lehman College. Yeah. You know, so. And what's up, P? Yeah. Okay. 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 That's what's up. So you were still dancing, working, going to school. Um, yeah. And then, and then, so speaking of sports, the NBA. Okay. So how did, how did that um, role come about? <laughs> okay. So at the time I was still working at a bank. Um, I was there for maybe like three years and frankly, I was tired of it. <laughs> I was like, this is just not it. <laughs> so I started kind of like job hunting. I told my friend about it, who at the time I danced with. And she was like, oh, well, you know, I know about at my current job, like maybe I can get you in. So I said, okay. So I went on a job interview. I interviewed with about four people, finally sat down with the head of the company. And he was very honest with me. And he said, the job is yours if you want it, but you shouldn't take it. Mm. I was like, oh. Okay, why not? He's like, you know, I just don't think you should leave wh where you are right now for this job. Like I said, if you want it, it's yours. But I don't think that's really the right move. And I was just like, oh, man, okay. He's like, well, think it over and give me a call. So I was like, well, what am I going to do? Like, what do, you, what do you do if somebody says that to you? You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. You have to hear what they said. Like, what they said means something. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, you know, I decided not to take it. He was like, okay, well, you know, good luck with everything. And I was like, all right. And literally, like, not even a week later, he calls me. 
And I was like, hey, he was like, hey, he's like, listen, I was talking to my friend over at the NBA and he was telling me how he needed an administrative assistant. And I instantly thought of you. Wow. He's like, what? <laughs> he's, like, I thought of you. he's like, I told him that I know someone that would be perfect for the position. And then he just got all of the specs for me. He's like, yeah, this is how much it pays. This is where it is. Hey, your interview is on such and such day. And I was just like, okay. First time on the New Jersey transit bus <laughs> going out to wow. Secaucus. Wow. I don't even know where I'm going. You know, I didn't have a GPS or anything like that. I had a cell phone, but we didn't have like Wi-Fi. Nobody had <laughs> Apple, Google Maps, <laughs> Waze. <laughs> right. We didn't have that. And I got there. I interviewed with um, my then manager and he was just like, yeah, you know, this is what you'll be doing and this and that. I was like, oh, yeah, I could do that. Okay. And that's how that journey began. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So was that in, what What year was that? <laughs> that was 2009, I think. Oh, 2009. Okay. So you have been working there two years before we went to All-Star Weekend. Because <laughs> I had, <laughs> we went to All-Star Weekend in 2011. Yes. So another thing about China, <laughs> let me tell y'all, open my eyes because... <laughs> Um, part of, part of, you know, my journey is that I worked in sports for 10 years about, and, um, and when I was working at the high school sports management, uh, you know, we decided, um, Reverend Branch, he was like, you should go to All-Star Weekend and cover it. Um, mind you, I had never really, I'd, I'd been in Philly, but not to cover it or to work it. Right. So, you know, I was just going out there and uh, hoping to prayer, <laughs> you know, to LA, yeah. 2011. Yeah. And then, I don't know, somehow I told you that I think that I was going or something like yeah. that. And, yeah. you know, you was like, oh, well, you can, like, stay with me. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, I'm going. And you're going to be working most of the time. But, you know, but you let me stay with you. And we just had a ball. Even though you was, like, working most of the time, even the time that you weren't working, we still got to hang out. <laughs> and my yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah. It was so. Wait, so was that? But that wasn't your first All Star. Had you gone to the All Stars before that? Yeah, I did All Star in Arizona, Phoenix. Okay, okay, okay. So you had one before. So that's good. So at least you kind of knew the ropes. <laughs> I knew the ropes. I had already had maybe like three or four events in, under my belt because okay. I did the first finals like literally two months, I think, after I started working there. That was just mind blowing. I was like, this is what you guys do. <laughs> Every time there's an event like this, this is crazy. <laughs> but it was fun at the same time. It really was. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that experience was like, it was like something I'll never forget. My first one started again, like working the event, like definitely something I'll never forget. So yeah, so yeah. Shout out to you for <laughs> helping to make that happen. And after that, the rest was history. I went to like I think probably seven years after that. Yeah. Uh, or eight years after that, but um, right. but now I haven't. We, now I haven't been in a few years. And we met, met up, remember, and didn't even know we ended up being an all star in New Orleans. Right, right. Twenty sixteen, right? Yeah. I think it was twenty sixteen. Yep. I went yep. down to just like you know spend some time with Ricardo, but also to see that city. I've never been there. I was like, oh, all star is fun. I won't be working. This should be cool. <laughs> and then I saw one of your posts, I think, and I was like, wait, Mia, are you in New Orleans right now? Uh, Right, we didn't even know that we were going to be there. And it was like just again, yeah. just you know what I'm saying, just like old times, yeah. going there getting crepes and whatnot. <laughs> I don't want to go back just for the food, girl. <laughs> yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, also that New Orleans was nothing like. I love that city. Me too. Uh, Me too. I can't wait to go back. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So we still roll it down memory lane, but you know, we're we're still not getting to the commandments. We're getting to right. the commandments. Um, okay, so okay, so but after okay, so then after the MBA, then did you did you go to your current job where you are now after the MBA? I did. So I had okay, to so cool. Yeah, I had to leave the MBA because that was during the time of the whole lockout. Oh, oh okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. So that's what kind of ended my time there because at the time I was a contract employee and they would have to let all of the contractors go mm. when mm. the lockout began. Mm. So I knew that. I was like, it doesn't make sense for me to just sit around for them to give me my walking papers. Let me just go ahead and find something else. Yeah. And that's when I ended up working um, at Deutsche Bank as a contractor. 
as okay. a cash employee. Yep. And I did that for about three years. And then I switched from that to the job that I have now. And I've been working this job for eight years. Wow. So, eight years this has been. Yes. Man, man, man. Okay. Okay. And okay. So, but that's your professional job. You're nine to five. Now, do you create, but you, you do marketing in there, right? No. Oh. Not, not at all. Yeah, it's very like techy. It's provisioning technical stuff like mobile phones and iPads and putting through orders for new internet service, disconnecting service, new servers being put up in different locations. It's very like techy. -ish. Okay, okay, very tech. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a lot of click clacking on the computer, you know, saving documents, creating documents, sharing documents, having spreadsheets. It's a lot of moving around on the computer for that job. But Okay, yeah, and you and you've been have you been working remotely for the whole eight years for the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. So so when people were doing that during COVID, <laughs> you was like, Oh, I'm not new to this. I'm new to this. Right. And I actually did a video because I felt like, well, I can share some of the things that I learned because I remember how it felt when I first started that job. I hated working from home. Yeah. I yeah. was like, oh, there's nobody to talk to. <laughs> Where's <laughs> the mic go? Exactly. Yeah. You know, because that was the whole thing that I loved about being in the office. Like, you know, you walking past and then you catch up with your office buddies. Like, hey. And then you right, know, right. What's up? Right. <laughs> but then when you're home, you're like just looking at the walls and your pet. You know, my cat was looking at me like, girl, I'm going to sleep. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> uh -huh. No, I feel you. I feel you. Okay, yeah. cool. Life with Y. I see she likes your earrings. Oh, but, thank um... you. I made them. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. Okay. So now, now we're getting into it. I know that y'all, this is the moment you all have been waiting for. <laughs> Um, so Donnell is a content creator. Like I said, I saw a YouTube page. That's on 5.5 thousand subscribers. I say, go ahead, Donnell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you know, have, have really come a long way because I remember your first videos <laughs> and, you know, y'all go subscribe to her. What is it's still, it's Donnell on YouTube as well, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, so, all platforms. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 okay. So as a, as a YouTuber, um, you know, what are you know the I, I have two for y'all, <laughs> but um, I want I want China. You know, let's 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 go through one by one the ten content commandments. Yes. Okay. The first one is thou shall feel worthy. A lot of times we feel like we are not worthy for whatever reason. I don't know where that comes in at, but it does. And we need to reverse that and know that we are worthy. Mm. So that's the first one. I love, love it. Yes. Um, the second one is thou shall nurture their God-given gifts. So Come on, nurture them, please. Seriously, like everybody can't sing, right? It's like that for a reason. <laughs> everybody's not supposed to sing. You need some people to dance. <laughs> you need some people to cook. So, and everybody has their own gifts. Like, share them. Don't just keep them in your back pocket. Like, it's not doing anybody any good, including yourself. Exactly. And and you are meant to shine. You know, um, that one of the scriptures says, you know, don't hide your light under a bush. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we, God wants you to put your light on top of a hill so that exactly. all can see. And then, you know, the poet, well, I don't know, I remember her name, but, you know, that talks about when you shine your light, you allow the, the, the you know, others to shine there, so. Yeah, yep, see? Okay, the third one is thou shall have faith in their dreams coming true. Mm. Please have faith, please. We need for y'all to have faith in your dreams coming true. I, I've gone through so many life experiences where I know that my faith is what got me through. Mm. Literally, just mm. that. My mm. faith literally carried me through to be able to sit here and talk about it. Mm. Mm. I knew that with all of me. So yeah, have faith, keep it, protect it. Yeah, I love, um, love that too, because I, and I just want to say, you know, please have that faith because that's what's going to, like you said, that's what's going to get you through 
And I was just reading something the other day. And this, the, have you heard of The Artist Way? Me and this, uh, one of my friends on here, Shaquilla, she, you, would, you would love this book. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. But, um, but, you know, she talks about how, you know, it's not like the people that we might see on TV or in theater or whatever in films. It's not that they're more talented than like everybody else out there. It's really their faith and their like audacity, their like tenacity yes. to like, keep on going to keep being consistent because a lot of people god gives everybody gifts you know god gives everybody gifts guys with everybody's talents but that faith you know that is what will separate you like yeah. the ordinary from the extraordinary thing that separates them is faith yeah. you know and doing that extra doing yeah. that extra that you need to do in order to separate yourself from the crowd yeah i absolutely agree okay Number four, thou shalt see challenges as opportunities. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> like, you know how many challenges I've been through? I don't look like it, but a lot. And I don't, I, I always try to see like the good in it, the flip side, you know? I try to look at the whole picture instead of feeling attacked which is what a lot of people sometimes tend to do when they get hit with the challenge. It's like, see, nothing ever goes my way. I can't ever do this and that. Mm -mm. No, we don't do that. No, not at all. <laughs> we have to look at it as opportunities. Hello. Yeah, um, yeah I know that whew, child, so many challenges come like, yeah even yesterday i wasn't feeling well i was like every monday i want to go live you know yeah. with somebody or by myself right. you know because i want to put things out there i want to encourage inspire you know like use my creativity like what we're talking about the content the content creator commandments but um but yeah and that was a challenge but that's an opportunity to say you know what mia okay you know you got to take some rest you know what i mean maybe it's an opportunity for me to rest and then, you know, this, then keep on going. So, yeah. yeah, look at those challenges as opportunities. I love that. Yes. Okay. Number five, thou shall believe in themselves in, in every way, shape, and form. I love that. You have to believe. Because mm -hmm. I, I really, I know that when you believe in something, like, it, things follow through to what you believed in. I've done it before and so that's how i know and i'm like oh wow so this is how this really works right <laughs> like, people weren't lying when they said this it's a real thing so i love that yeah you, you have to believe in yourself yeah. like yeah because because honestly i love the quote like don't wait for a producer like produce yourself i don't know who said it but uh, you know it's one of my favorite quotes and it's like because you have to believe in you i remember they said neo like neo like when when people were like trying to um you know sign him and things like that he was like i'm gonna bet on me like he's like i know i'm right. talented. i know i'm good i believe in myself so i'm betting on me you might be offering me this but if you can if you're not gonna take it you know what i'm saying somebody else will so exactly believe in yourself bet on you mm -hmm. yeah okay number six thou shalt speak positive words of affirmations over their life Come on, somebody. Words are so powerful. Like, let me tell you, I have said things out loud that I wanted. And I was just like, okay, you know, I said it. And then they actually came through. And I was like, whoa. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I was like, is this for real? And it's happened more than once. Mm, mm. So it's not like, oh, it was a fluke, which I don't believe in flukes anyway. But it's such a it's a, such a real true thing you have to speak positive over yourself yeah. you cannot say oh i'm not, not this and, or i'm you know something negative no because what you say you end up believing what you believe ends up happening like so it's just a domino effect yep and we can't have that y'all no. we cannot have that so speak those positive affirmations over your life i'm Thank telling you. you man it works it works yeah. definitely what i've spoken you know, yeah, it'll it'll come yeah. true. You know, I mean, granted, I've been saying, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire for a while now. I haven't gone through yet, but it's coming. You know, what I'm saying I'm not going to give up hope. I'm gonna believe. I'm gonna exactly. believe. You know, as long as you believe, you shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Okay, number seven. Thou shalt celebrate all wins, no matter how small the victory. I love it. I love it. 
A win is a win. A win is a win. It's a win. <laughs> it counts. It counts. That little win can literally like boost your whole mood, and then you don't know what's gonna stem from that. And and things shouldn't be measured to like, oh, it has to be grandiose for me to celebrate. No, you. It's an accomplishment, no matter how small it is. Yes. Yes. One of the things um, you you reminded me of things while you're saying these, and I want you to say my two too, so that I won't have to go to my. Okay. <laughs> do, do you have them? Yeah. Oh, I'm you, you them down right okay. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. So um so yeah, I've heard CJ. He works with ET the Hip Hop Preacher, and he talks about like how the journey, like not maybe the journey is the destination, but more so like you accomplishing those like little things on your way to like that big thing is the win you know what i mean it's more so like because you winning like, like let's say a grammy the grammy just passed like you winning the grammy like that's kind of out of your control right because it's like mm -hmm. get whatever but you doing those things on your way to getting the grammy like those yeah. are your wins exactly. those are your victories those are your grammys like you know, you have to, so you have to, like, you're very, tr you're very right. You have to celebrate those little wins. So every time you, you know, put out a video, that's a win. You know, <laughs> every time you, you know, because what happens after that is out of your control. But the things that you can control, you know, it's a win every time you do them. Yes, absolutely. All right. Number eight, thou shall recognize every loss as a lesson. Mm. <laughs> Every loss, yeah, it might be a loss for whatever that immediate thing was that you were trying to get or trying to do or whatever. But I bet you, you learned something <laughs> through that experience. So now maybe you can prevent experiencing that loss in the future. You know, I mean, I just recently went through, I don't really... I don't know if it was a real loss. I mean, I, I'm looking at it like it wasn't a real loss. There's a reason why it didn't go the way it went. But I felt like I kind of missed out on the opportunity because I missed seeing a certain email. And I was just like, oh, man, I was really bummed about it. And I was like, you know what? No. What did you learn? You learned that you're going to maybe set an alarm to check your emails once a day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep, like, yep. Yeah, that's something big, but it's something important because what if something even more grandiose comes through later? Like you want to be able to just stay on top of your stuff a little bit more. So yeah. I couldn't be mad at anybody for that. I was like, you know what? All right. Lesson learned, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like, well, okay. But still, but you did learn the lesson. Exactly. Right? And it'll help you to never do that. You don't like to never not check an email again. <laughs> exactly. um, the the missed emails sometimes be like, Girl. Money on the table, but you're like, you know what? But now I always, you know, <laughs> yeah. listen, I had to update. Yeah, that I, I feel you on that. Let's just say I feel you yeah. on that because, <sighs> yeah, one time I used to use this kind of like not random email, but you know, it just I didn't check it a lot. Yeah, yeah. After you miss one, you like nah. <laughs> yeah. it's like nothing you can do about it. It's like you can't turn back hands of time, you know. And it just it's just one of those L's that you just have to take. It's like, all right, I'll take that one. <laughs> it's not going to happen no more. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's not going to happen anymore. Nope. Okay. Number nine. I don't know if I should mention, should I mention number nine at the end? No, I'm not. I'm just going to say it. Okay. <laughs> number, nine. okay. <laughs> number nine. Thou shall not succumb to imposter syndrome <laughs> yes 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 that is that's that's like basically what inspired this live exactly um yeah that was one of the ones i contributed because you know um china had posted that video on imposter syndrome you have to see it on you know the page but <clears throat> on her page and on my page in the first little yeah. clip trying to put it in there but <laughs> you know um but we have to we have to know that we deserve to be here we're not imposters, you know, like that, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to hide. We don't have to, you know, 
fend off compliments like oh you know you did so good oh no it wasn't me like no it was you right. like you know like <laughs> you're working all this time you've been putting out this content you've been counting those small wins that's why you got to celebrate those small wins yeah because if you don't then you'll think like oh no i'm not supposed to be here like why am i in this room you know and like yeah because you have all those things that you did you're not even remembering right. so you know you have to count those as small wins um do you want to say anything about I, I just I just want to share that I do feel shy and, and anxious about getting on social media. And I told you that I would share that, you know what I mean? That every time I post, it's like, <laughs> you know, I so I feel. Shocked. I was shocked that you felt like that. I was like, what? You? Yes, yes. A lot of anxiety because I'm such a people pleaser and I'm such a perfectionist that, you know what I mean? But I'm like, like wielding myself off of that, trying to get away from it. So, yes, definitely. You have to because no one is perfect and what you have to share and offer to everyone else is so much bigger than you so mm. it's sitting there like putting so much overthinking because i do the same thing i'll sit there and try to perfect something to the t and it's like girl if you don't just get this out like cut it out stop mm -hmm. Just this little snippet, even though it's not perfect, it's probably going to ignite something for someone else. You just don't know. So don't hold on to it and keep it to yourself. Like, share your, your stuff. I love it. It's, it's great. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> exactly. I was like, you know what? The time is now. I'm not doing this anymore. Okay? It's going to be new. <laughs> going forward everything is getting shared <laughs> <laughs> let's go let's go and because i'm a real like we are real people we're human and we see so much content that looks yes. so perfect like it's just so mind-boggling to me i'm like okay but now that now that i create certain types of content i'm like okay dad what did they have to do to get that shot or you know what i mean like i i think past what they're just showing on the surface and I'm like, yeah, no. No, <laughs> right, no, it would be me. You gotta be yourself, right. you have to be exactly. yourself. Yep, okay, and the very last one, this one is so key that when I read it, I had to read it a second time for myself because mm. I was like, girl, this is talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thou shall find time to rest, step away, or find help when feeling overwhelmed. Mm, mm. I'm not one to ask for help. Mm. I will struggle to do something before mm. I ask for help. Not that I feel like I'm too good to get the help. That's just that's just how I am. I'm like, no, I can figure it out. No, 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 it's all right. I got it. I don't want to bother you. You know, like, I'm one of those people. And it's like, but you can't do that all the time. Oh. No, no, we got to stop. We got to stop this whole, you know, like, oh, I'm this strong, you know what I'm saying? This strong black woman or, you know, or even if right. just, you know, just trying to be, yeah, you know, you're trying to prove something like, who are we proving something to? You know, we need a break. We need a right. rest. We need to, you know, especially with content, because, you know, you are, you know, um, you are opening yourself up. You're being very vulnerable when you share content. So we are opening ourselves up to more people, to comments, to, you know, to people's, thoughts and opinions yeah so you know sometimes we might have to take a you know either a breather step back mm -hmm. might have to step away or we might just need to ask for help like right. listen you know whether it's from your followers whether it's from your friends family like somebody help help <laughs> you know, but we got to we have to utilize that we have to ask for help when we need it absolutely because burnout is real yep yeah, very real. No, I have good. experienced it and it's not cute <laughs> not fun <laughs> oh my <laughs> not God. It took me so long to like come out of that. It's hard. It's like a hard climb out of burnout. Mm -hmm. for so mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm like, I try to just listen to my body. And when I feel like you need to just give it a rest for a minute, then I give it a rest. I'm like, look, there's stuff there. People will be, they'll still be entertained. Right, right. Oh. And if we need to repurpose something, <laughs> then that's going to be repurposed. If it needs to be a throwback Thursday right. on a Tuesday, it got to just, because we can't, you know, yep. we can't produce it. So. Exactly. Love it. Love yep. it, love it, love it. Cool. Well, thank 
Thank you. We got them in. Yeah, well, we got the ten oh, commandments. I know this this went longer than I usually, you know. <laughs> I think it always goes longer than I expected. But you know, just we have so many stories. I mean, you know, like we said, it's just the eighties. Right. It's like uh, it's like over thirty years. Like so, it's like we got we had a lot to talk about. Exactly. But um, but why don't you let people know, you know, um, what you're selling, you know, what you have going on, where people can follow you, how they can support you. Okay. So I currently have a website. It's it's donnell.com and I'm not selling the merchandise just yet. I'm not having an imposter syndrome, I promise. <laughs> I promise. But I am getting things ready and geared up so that you guys can be blessed with the greatness. So some of the items are earrings mm -hmm. I, and they actually match some scrunchies. Uh -huh. So this is one set. And there's like, I don't know, maybe seven other different prints, six or seven. Um, so yeah, they'll be dropping very soon. I don't have an exact date, but if you go over to the website, you join the mailing list, you'll be the first to find out when they drop. And, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited because I feel like everybody's going to love them. Yes, I already love what I see <laughs> online, what I see you have on your earrings and, Thank the, you. and the hair bed. So I love it. So I can't wait for the drop. Yeah. Can I wait for the drop? And um, yeah, are you going to be putting your cookbook back up for sale? Or I didn't even think up for sale. No, it's not. Because I that was with my old website and I ended up just kind of scrapping that. Okay. 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 But I, I do still have it. I. I I would definitely redo it and make it look a bit better. Okay, um, got you, got you. Yeah. Redesign it and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Now like I'm I telling y'all, whenever if it comes back out, those recipes are bomb. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and healthy. So that's the most important thing. Yep, they'll actually help you to lose weight um, because they're so clean but tasty. Yes, tasty for real. She don't she don't <laughs> short you on the on the spices or the flavor. Exactly. All right. All right, cool. So y'all make sure y'all follow her. Like I said, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Sign up for her mailing list at itsdornell.com. Yep. And y'all make sure y'all stay tuned here uh, for Brown Girls Go Live. Like I said, we're coming to you every week uh, with, a, you know, just another amazing woman after amazing woman. Sometimes I'll be here by myself, but that's okay. <laughs> because <laughs> but, you are so, an amazing woman. <laughs> thank you. <okay. laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, but yes, y'all make sure y'all share this. And if y'all want to support Brown Girls Glow, um, you know, there's a link in my bio to our PayPal. You know, you want to just 